Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Art Bros. With well, not just any episode, a special episode. Yeah, a special episode. I like. I'm gonna like this episode. I haven't heard it yet, but I know I'm gonna love it. <laughs> we have with us today, other than the lovely Fancy Dave and yeah. me, Michael. We have with us Jennifer Dassel from the Art Curious Podcast. Jennifer, hello. Hello. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> of course, thank you. So, if you guys haven't heard Jennifer's awesome podcast called the art curious podcast just go check that out and then come back we don't mind it's fine you know we already got your three second views it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so check out her show um we're gonna link it down in the description it's a fantastic show that shows a sexy and wild and provocative side of art history and we are very honored to have you on our show with us jennifer thank you so much well likewise thank you for asking me to be here of course so we're gonna talk today about this beautiful self-portrait that you see in front of you. It is uh, Elizabeth Louise Vigée Lebrun. Am I saying it that right? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I usually say Lebrun, but I don't. Th I think they're both correct. Lebrun, so you're good. Lebrun. I've heard it pronounced different ways, but me too. I, for the sake of this episode, we'll go with Lebrun. Okay. <laughs> Lebrun. So, uh, Jennifer, you picked out this beautiful painting for us, painted in. When was it painted? 1782. 1782. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please tell us a little bit about the artist? Yes. Okay, so Vijay Lebrun was born just Vijay. The Lebrun came later. That was her married name. Um, she was born in Paris in the mid-18th century, so like 1755 is her actual birth year. And she really early on, she knew that she wanted to be a painter. Her father was a painter and he was only sort of semi successful, but he basically taught her from a very early age, a little bit about what it means to be a painter and how to get commissions and how to paint people in particular. He was a portraitist. And so very early on, she started making her own portraits, drawing all over the walls of her house and just knew right away that this was what she wanted to do for calling, her right? own living yeah. yes exactly but then i always think about how kind of crazy it would be for a woman or a girl really at this point to decide that she wanted to really actually have a career in the 18th century this is so crazy it was really unheard of because yeah. most women just grew up to you know be wives and mothers and that's basically it yeah you gotta think um, how crazy that like she, like she wasn't a woman yet she was a kid when she like decided exactly. this exactly yeah. yeah and so she was really lucky in that not only did she have a dad who was already a semi-successful artist but her family also had a little bit of money i guess she'd probably be considered middle class by our standards she, they weren't wealthy but they certainly weren't poor well, but they good. had enough money that they could send her to school which was another kind of rarity at the time so she got not only that artistic education from her dad's side of things but then she got a more well-rounded general education as well so that really led her into this opportunity to meet other people and get herself established socially and then start getting out there and getting artistic commissions from an early age, I think she was already only maybe a teenager before she started doing her first portraits for commissions. Wow. So, and that led to like even uh, commissions from royalty. Yeah. yeah. E exactly. <laughs> she eventually became the actual serious only portraitist to Marie Antoinette, you know, of course, the Queen of France. And that's another moment that I have this sort of awe for her because I think this is the most important woman in the country and one of the most important women in Europe and you'd think that there would be all these official court portraitists lined up asking to or really begging to be the official portraitist to of the queen and the queen actually made her own decision and said no wow. I want this particular woman wow. and that's that's pretty ballsy in and of itself to have two women really bond together and mutually choose each other for these high positions and not just the... <laughs> yeah i'm sorry yeah but not not no, just no. like not just like like women like they were rebellious women from the things they that i've, really I've read you know but lebrun herself d d choosing to be an artist and make a profession out of it despite you know the the stigma of being a woman in that time uh, trying to make it in a man's profession in a man's world and then you had in those times too. yeah in those times and you had Marie Antoinette right. who who was very counter royal culture 
You it's know. so true. Yeah, so yeah. maybe that's what they kind of saw the, the rebel in their eyes, and they were like, you know, you and I, we're going to be best friends. Like, I get yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> you no, get me. True. You, you get me. I get you. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. There's some story, and I, you know, I'm probably going to get it wrong, so please feel free um, to have your listeners come and let me know <laughs> what I got this wrong. <laughs> but there's some amazing story where um, there was one moment where Vijay Lebrun was painting in, in the studio with Marie Antoinette, and she did something like, I think she dropped her paintbrushes, and I believe that she may have been pregnant at the time, and so she couldn't bend over very easily, and the queen jumped up from her seat and said, you know, oh, please let me pick that up for you, oh and uh, that was just totally unheard of. You know, royalty does not yeah, serve you. That you just the royalty. Yeah, no, and it, I guess that just kind of shows the friendship that they had, had you know, the the informalness of mm -hmm. the the relationship between painter and sitter but like the informality is what made her paintings the so great the fact exactly. that she was able to get that comfortable with her uh, sitters you know? yeah and she was able to bring out that vulnerability that only someone that i trust would have, have ever see you mm -hmm. know so, exactly yeah so I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead, Jennifer. Go no, no, no. ahead. Oh, you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was just also thinking um, there was also the fact that she, in her portraits, I always think that there's a way that you can always look after you've seen a few Vijay Lebrun portraits for a while, that they have a particular style. You can kind of start identifying um, the way she paints people. She has a particular look when she paints people. Um, but the one of the things that she does is she's very good at really kind of flattering them. So everything that she does, she's doing it to make them just look just slightly better than they actually do in real life. And so I could think that that only really helps to establish that rapport and friendship because people would probably say, oh, you know, wow, you make me look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're telling me is that she is the original snack Snapchat filter. <laughs> yes, it's so true. And she's done all these wonderful self-portraits that I always look at. And recently I've been thinking, like, she must have been the original selfie queen, too. Yes. <laughs> if you consider self-portraits to be whatever the selfie was back in the 18th century. Because um, she really was so good at self-promotion and painting her own image and getting it out there that it was this sort of form of advertising. Well, it's pretty cool. That's perfect. So let's, uh, we're talking about self-portraits, selfies. Let's talk about this selfie that we see in front of us. What can you tell us about this beautiful self-portrait made by Le Brun? So this is a work called Self-Portrait in a Straw Hat, and it's from 1782. And uh, again, as I've just mentioned, Vijay Lebrun painted a lot of self-portraits of herself. And some of the reasons she did that was uh, obviously like an advertisement to say, hey, look, here I am. Look what I can do. I'm a pretty good painter. Here's my own <laughs> portrait. And also part of that was promotional in that she was trying to sort of shoved back a little bit from the male-centered society where people were very much thinking women need to be at home and mm -hmm. women need to not have careers. They mm -hmm. need to not have anything serious going on in their lives except for their family. That's really the core of a woman's life. Uh. So the, this picture shows her standing up against this kind of beautiful sky, clouds background. And she is very clearly holding her palette and her brushes. So right away, she's establishing herself as an artist, someone who's actually working out in the world. But then on top of all that, she's not just covered in like a smock with paint all over it. She's wearing this beautiful pink dress with these white frills at the neckline, this black shawl, and this amazing straw hat with flowers and a big feather plume coming off of the side. And then she also has some nice jewelry. Like I think there are some beautiful earrings that she's wearing. I can kind of see on my my image here. Yeah. So she's know, oh, well, oh, sorry for interrupting you there, but uh, no. that's just I like I really love like the more I look at this, uh, this self portrait um I really love her sense of pride in being an artist. Yeah. Because like she is like holding that big that big palette right there, and like like she's showing off like you know not only am I an artist like I can afford all this nice stuff for me this nice hat like oh, you said yeah. the jewelry. It's I can afford exactly to get my right. hair done very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. And so don't you think that that makes it look like she's saying, I'm really good at what I do, not only from, you can actually see in this painting, my brush strokes and my color usage, how good I am, but also I must be this good because I'm able to afford all of this, that people pay me well. That's exactly what I was thinking too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah. Had either of you guys known an, 
much about this artist before I mentioned that I wanted to talk about her? I, like I said, I had listened to the episode you uh, had done, which we'll link down. Links in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had heard her name. I just never really explored her work. But but I had yeah. her name as an association with the Queen of, you know. Yeah, and my first, my first exposure to this artist was when the Met had a show of her work uh, just last year mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i was just ecstatic when you when you brought this uh this one uh, artist up so and, i'm so glad uh, yes <laughs> so uh can you tell us a little more about the portrait like what inspired her to create this this work you know if every move by an artist is intentional what inspired her to do this sort of self-portrait so this work is actually based on another work by one of her own favorite artists, who was Peter Paul Rubens. And so when she was learning to become a painter when she was a teenager, she would frequently go to uh, museums and collections. And I believe there was one specific collection that her mother took her to see after she had died, which was where she was introduced to paintings by Rubens for the very first time. She was particularly drawn to um, works by Dutch and Flemish masters. And this one in particular is based on a particular painting called The Portrait of Susanna London, or it's known by this other alternative as um, Le Chapeau de Paille, and I apologize for my horrible French accent. <laughs> Better than us, but, don't worry. <laughs> oh, no. But it was painted probably about, a, I think, about 150 years before Vijay painted her own version. And this is an image that's a sister of one of Rubens's wives. I believe it is his second wife, um, whose name was Helena Formal, and this is her sister, Susanna. And it's pretty much very similar in terms of the layout. You have, instead of Elizabeth Vijay Lebrun in front of this beautiful sky backdrop, you have this other woman, Susanna, also in front of a rich blue sky with these dark... Um, stormy clouds. I think the dark stormy clouds are a little darker in the Re Rubens painting than in the yeah. Vijay Le Brun painting. But you also have a lot of that similar sensibility where we have this woman who is dressed rather fancily. She has this big black felt hat, again, with this giant plume of feathers on top, and she's wearing a nice dress and this black wrap, kind of gauzy wrap. Um, very much hiding her face a little bit in shadow, just like Vijay Lebrun's face is. So she specifically is pointing back to this master who is her very favorite. And this was a well-known painting at the time. This was one of the most uh, well-known paintings by Rembrandt. So the fact that she's pointing to something so well-known um, really puts her out there that other people who would see her own self-portrait would immediately be able to recognize the link that she's trying to make. Oh. I see. Mm -hmm. Wow, so that's like a really bold statement too. On top of it's true. Yeah, on top of the wearing the you know the flossy, 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 and whole like holding the palette <laughs> and whatnot. Like she's also on top saying like, well, you know, I compare myself to this. You know, in in exactly. essence, mm -hmm. that, that's that's pretty cool. In my it's opinion. kind of yeah it's kind of like if somebody was thinking i'm gonna make my own self-portrait today but i'm gonna be exactly like the mona lisa i mean that's not yeah. a very good example no no but, but i know what you mean like look think of all yeah. the celebrities that are they they take uh, instagram photos in like the same position as as like these amazing works of art mm -hmm. yeah you know exactly. um did hell uh, beyonce just came out with some photos and everyone's comparing it to artworks. Mm -hmm. It's you know? true. Me, me included. I definitely did that. Oh yeah, that's the. There we go. That's where I was seeing it. <laughs> so it's, it was that's, a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. And th that just seems to be like this sort of trend. Is you want if you want to be taken seriously, you better treat yourself like one of the serious artists out there. You know, so that's yeah, pretty it's cool. Like, it's like fake it till you make it. Yeah, uh, like Buster Rhymes <laughs> said. If you want to be part of the greatest, you got to be the greatest yourself. Yes. Thank you. That's good old, right. good old Buster Rhymes. All right, so Jennifer, just to wrap things up, what would you want our audience to know about this artist before they before they stop listening today? I think I'd want people to know that um, she was only she was one of more than you'd think in terms of women artists who really ran out there in the late 18th century, early 19th century and started making things happen. Mm -hmm. I think so much now, um, even now today, it's still hard to find solo exhibitions for even contemporary women artists. Um, but these historical women artists are really starting to be understood and um, researched a little more and more. So I would say that 
Vijay Lebrun is probably one of the most famous from this time period, but there are a lot more out there. So I would just encourage people to dig in and um, explore. Go look. Awesome. That's right. Go see mm-hmm. art. That's fantastic. <laughs> all right, Fancy Dave, what do you take out of all this? Oh, man, you know, I think the audience knows. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. I really do like it. So, uh, <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, just you've, you've helped me see this portrait in a whole new light. Just the nice. way you, the the way you explain it, the same way you do on your show, people go check out that show if you like. And check out the specific episode yeah. on Elizabeth. Yes, there's the specific episode that uh, turned me on to eat uh, more to look into this artist even more deeper. So uh, again, Jennifer, thank you for being on the show with us. Thank you guys. This was so much fun. Right, and um, from Fancy Dave mm-hmm. and me myself, Mike. See you next time here on the Art Bros. Later. <laughs>